I'm going to make a double-sided sweatshirt. The garment will be perfect for cold weather. As I've said, this is going to be a double-sided sweatshirt. We've already made a blouse of blend wool. It was one layered. As I've said, this garment will be double-sided. On one side, it will be blue with pink seams. The sleeves will also be pink when rolled. The other side will be pink with blue seams. It will look very unusual. You can change the sides and look different every day. This is a very useful technique. I've constructed a special pocket for this garment. I'll show it to you later. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern for this sweatshirt. To make a pattern, we need to know six measurements. Bust, hips, the width of the back, the length of the back, the sleeve length and the length of the garment. I'll make a sweatshirt for Ola. Her bust is 98 cm, hips 100 cm. The width of the back is different from the 10 measurement current system in this case. I've already shown you how to measure the width of the back in the garments with no pattern. From one shoulder top to the other. In our case, 39 cm. The length of the back is 40 cm. The length of the garment 65 cm. The length of the sleeve 62 cm. It's very convenient to measure the width of the back and then proceed to the length of the sleeve from this point. Let's have a look at the sketch. I can move the fabrics aside. The shoulders are dropped. There are different ways for making garments with drop shoulders. I've already shown you various techniques. How to construct such shoulders and coats, blouses, jackets. Change any design you like. I want you to understand that you do not necessarily have to do everything exactly like I show you. I want you to use your imagination. Drop shoulders, straight sleeves. The garment is going to be a bit loose. There will be a seam in the center front. These are not patch pockets, they are double. We'll show you how to make them. You can wear it blue on the face with pink decoration or pink on the face with blue decoration. We chose this color combination and you can choose any you like. Let's get down to work. Here's the sketch and the six measurements. First, I need to draw the center back line. This is also going to be the center front. I need to mark the point zero. It marks the seventh neck bone level. First, I need to draw a horizontal line here. This is the neckline. Measure and mark 40 cm down from the zero point. And then about 20 cm lower, the hip line. You can measure and mark 18 cm or even less. Olga has low hips. Actually, her waist to hip measurement is 23 cm. But an approximate measurement will be enough. The garment is going to be pretty loose. Draw a horizontal line through the mark 40. This is the waistline. This is the hip line. 
Я взяла 18 сантиметров, можно брать 20, 17, 21. Draw the heap line wherever you need it to be placed. 17, 18 or even 22 centimeters lower. Next, I need to divide the back length in half. About 20 centimeters. This is an approximate bust line. I need to draw it for the further construction. The width of the back is 39 centimeters. That means that I need to measure and mark 19.5 centimeters. This is the width of the back. What about the length? The length of the garment is 65 centimeters. I need to add about 3 centimeters up from the point zero and then measure and mark 45 centimeters down from it. In our case, it's 2 centimeters below the hip line. Don't waste a lot of time on it. Sign the lines. The hip line. The bottom. I've drawn the main lines. The width of the back neckline will be 8.5 cm. If I make it wider, it will be too much open. The width of the back neckline is 8.5 cm and the height 2.7 cm almost 3 cm. Next, I need to connect these points with a beautiful round line. Have a look here. Find a point in which the width of the back and the back neckline cross. Measure and mark about 1.5 cm down from this point and then draw a line through it and this point. As I've said, this distance is 1.5 cm wide. Have a look at the bias line. The more biased the line is, the less fabric will be here in the underarm. This is the shoulder top. This is the sleeve. The length of the sleeve is 60 cm. I think that 60 cm will be a perfect length in our case. You can make sleeves of different length make cuffs or decorate them. Be creative. This is the sleeve line. Next, I need to measure and mark the hip measurement. The full measurement is 100 cm. I need to divide it by 4. 25 cm plus 2 cm for the ease. That makes 27 centimeters in total. Thus, the circumference of hips is 108 centimeters instead of 100 centimeters. It's enough. The bust is 98 centimeters. One fourth is 24.5 plus 2 centimeters for the fitting ease. This is the bust line. Next, I need to draw a side seam. It should be slightly round. Watch the way I'm drawing it. You can make this line more or less bias. What is important is that there should be a right angle here. In my case, the width of the sleeve at the bottom is 11 cm. Next, I need to extend the width of the sleeve further to the armhole. Be very attentive, take into consideration the circumference of your arm. 
Don't make the sleeves too tight. I've measured and marked about 18 cm down from the shoulder top. And next I need to connect these two points. Have a look at this angle. This is the shoulder top. I remind you, this is the back pattern. Have a look at the sketch. I want to make seams here. I want you to be creative. Do not be afraid of experiments. The sleeves in the front and the back will be absolutely the same. I hope that everything is clear so far. Watch what I do attentively. Next, I need to divide this line into three parts. In my case, it's 19 cm wide. So each part is about 6 cm. Drop a perpendicular here and mark about 1 by 5 cm on each side. I remind you that this is the armhole. I need to make it slightly round. You can sew the sleeve the way it is, but I prefer to do it this way. I'm doing it to avoid having extra fabric in the armhole. Next, I'm going to outline the pattern for the back with a blue marker pen. You know what? I'd better move this point one centimeter lower. Have a look at this line. The sleeve will be sewn to it. In the books, this line is usually straight. But I prefer making it a bit round. It's up to you whether to make a garment tighter on the waistline or not. It depends on your body type. You can even draw it this way. It would also be okay. I also want to make the garment about 1 cm tighter on the waistline in the center back. This is how the back looks like now. Next, I need to outline the sleeve. I'd like to change it a bit as well. Have a look at this point. Let's move it for one centimeter as well. This is the point I'm talking about. Due to this fact, the armhole will be neater. As I've said, the back and the front of the sleeves are identical. You can extend the width of the sleeve. It's all up to you. You can change the design however you like. The sleeve is red. 
The back is blue. Next I'm going to draw the front. It will be green. First, I need to raise this point for 2 cm. I'm not going to change the sleeve. It's going to be absolutely the same in the back and the front. I'll raise this point for 1.5 cm. It would be enough. This is how the line should be drawn. Change just its upper part. It's very convenient to work with such tracing paper. I need to measure and mark about 11 cm down from this point. This is how the front neckline is going to look like. I just don't want to waste time on making two separate patterns for the front and the back. I'll show you how to use one and the same pattern, both for the front and the back. Thus, you can see the difference between the details. The front differs by the shoulder slope and the neckline. All the rest is the same. The pattern is ready. I can cut it now. Be very attentive. The point zero marks the seventh neck bone. The bust, the waistline, the hips, the bottom. This is the construction line. This is the shoulder. It's bias. The sleeve is accurate. If you draw the shoulder this way or that, it would also be okay. You'll just have much more fabric here in the underarm. One fourth of the bust measurement with the fitting is, one fourth of the waist measurement with the fitting is, and one fourth of the hip measurement with the fitting is. I've divided the armhole into three parts, drop a perpendicular, measured 1.5 cm to each side, and drew neat concave lines. The sleeve is perfect. It's very important. I've decided not to cut the pattern off the camera, because I'd like to show you some details. I want to show you the difference in the front and the back. I prefer making one pattern instead of two for such garments. Do not forget about the checkpoints. This is one of them. This is where the sleeve is going to be inserted. Be very attentive, please. It's very important to mark the checkpoints. Be creative. You can change the designs which I show you however you like. You can make a sweatshirt more loose. Or you can make it tighter. I just show you the techniques. I'll cut one more detail for the sleeve. I'll show you why I want to do it. Do not forget to cut this piece. I write it down that there will be a fold made here.
it takes just several minutes to cut the pattern. In the previous video, I showed you how to make it in detail. You know that it doesn't take long to do it. Have a look here. I've cut the pattern. The front, the back and the sleeve details. Have a look at the sleeve pattern. You can make this line straight. It would also be correct. I think that it would look better this way. The sleeve is going to be very beautiful. I remind you that this is a dropped shoulder sweatshirt. The sleeve starts 13 cm down from the shoulder top. Here's the sleeve. I remind you that the back was drawn with a blue marker pen. I need to fold the pattern this way. The patterns for the back and the sleeve are ready. When I start working with the front, I'll unfold the pattern. I hope that everything is clear so far. If you don't like this variant, you're welcome to make two separate patterns for the front and the back. Let's start with the blue blend wool. When I cut it, I'll put the cut details on the pink fabric and cut new ones according to them. I'm using thin blend wool. It's made of wool and viscose. Lay out the fabric carefully. Make sure that there are no folds in it. This is the back. I'm going to cut the front here, so I'll move the sleeve aside. You know what? I've decided to extend the width of the sleeve. I'll add 2 cm to each side. Anyway, first I need to cut the back. No seam allowance needed on the neckline. To all the other sides, I need to add 1 cm for the seam allowance. You can change the design however you like. Make it tighter or looser, make it longer or shorter. Anything is correct. Do not forget to make tiny notches on the waistline. Have a look here. I want to move this checkpoint for 1 cm, because I'm going to make the sleeve 1 cm wider. The blue details for the back are ready. I 
I need to pin them together because I'll use them for cutting the pink details. I remind you that the garment is going to be double-sided. Next, I need to unfold the shoulder and cut the neckline. The pattern for the front is ready. The patterns differ in the neckline and the shoulder. The front one was raised for the balance. I need to pin the pattern. I also need to add one centimeter for the seam allowance to all the details except the neckline. Be very attentive. The sweatshirt is going to be pretty loose. However, I'm going to make a small tuck in the center front. It would make the lines more smooth. It's up to you whether to do it or not. The front is almost ready. Do not forget about the notches on the waistline. The front and the back are ready. They differ in the necklines and the shoulders. I can move the patterns away. Next, I need to cut the sleeves. I remind you that I've decided to add 2 cm to each side of the sleeve. Have a look at the pattern once again. As I've said, I need to add 2 centimeters. If I decide that the sleeves are too loose, I'll just cut the extra pieces. I can start cutting now. I need to add one centimeter to other sides. The front and the back details of the sleeves are absolutely even. There are a lot of designs in which the front and the back parts of the sleeves are different. But in this case, the garment is going to be pretty loose, sporty, so it's not necessary. Do not forget to make a notch to mark the center sleeve. This is very important. The blue details are ready. Next, I need to cut the pink ones. Have a look at the table. I've cut the blue details and pinned them to the pink fabric. I can start cutting now. As I've already said, 
The front and the back details on the sleeves are absolutely the same. I have two blue and two pink sleeves. Do not forget to make notches on the center sleeve. Next, I need to cut the back and the front. The garment is going to be very warm and comfortable. You can wear it instead of a jacket. It will be warmer than a cardigan. I'm also going to make a pocket on the front. I hope you like it. I have two blue and two pink backs and two blue and two pink fronts. This is the pocket back. It's 20-21 cm long and 18-19 cm wide. You can make pockets of any size you like. Make them comfortable. I also need to cut two blue and two pink underlay pieces. I'm sure that you've never seen such pockets before. Have a look here. Here are the underlay pieces of the two colors. Next, we're going to tack the blue details to the pink ones off the camera. This way, two different color details become one. Let me show you what we did off the camera. We tacked the blue details with the pink ones and then tacked the back details with the overlapping seam. The back is ready. The front will be tacked the same way. I'll show you how to do it. The sleeves are also ready. The sleeves are double-sided. The sweatshirt is going to be so warm. Have a look at the front details. These are the pocket back details. They are about 21 cm long and 18 cm wide. You can make them as big as you want. We stitch the underlay pieces of the two colors to the upper edges of the pocket bags. Have a look at them. We made two identical details for the two pockets. They consist of lining fabric and the underlay pieces of blend wool. Next, I need to tack the pocket bags in between the two layers of fabric. I apply the blue underlay piece to the pink side and vice versa. When we cut a pocket opening on the blue side, the pink underlay piece will be visible. And the same thing on the other side.
Apply the pink underlay piece to the blue detail. Make sure that the pockets are placed symmetrically. This is very important. Check the placement of the pockets. They should be absolutely even. Check the sides and the bottom. The details have to be accurate. Next, I need to pin the pockets. Then draw the lines for stitching and tack them. I'll show you the result. I was thinking about making such pockets for a long time, but this is the first time I'm actually making them. Next, I need to draw a line one centimeter away from the edge of the pocket bag. Watch the way I'm doing it. Next, I need to tack the pocket back according to the drawn lines. The pockets are going to be very unusual. You'll be able to use the same pocket no matter what size up you're wearing the sweatshirt. I'll take the second pocket the same way. I'll do it off the camera. Have a close look here. I'm taking the pocket circle-wise. There will be a rectangle on the face. You can choose the side of the sweatshirt according to your own mood. Wake up, have a look in the mirror and decide how you want to look like. Today it's pink, tomorrow it's blue. Very convenient. You can look different having just one garment. I've tucked the pocket. There is a rectangle on the blue side. Next, I need to tack from this side, right in the seam. Join the two details together and tack them. Be very attentive. When I cut the pocket opening, the pink under the piece will be seen from this side and the blue one from the pink side. Tuck right in the seam. This is a very useful technique. It's very important to tuck right in the first seam. Both the pocket bag and the underlay pieces will be hidden inside of the details. We just need to stitch the pocket bag according to the spacing seam. And that cut the pocket opening. 
мы еще сделаем, мы покажем. Have a look at the blue and the pink sides. Next, I need to check the front details. This is where the pocket bag is. The edges will be hidden between the blue and the pink details. Next, I need to check the blue and the pink sides together. Have a look here. The double-sided front details are ready. The pockets are hidden inside of them. When we cut the openings, we will be able to use the pockets on the both sides. Next, I need to tack the two front details together. It doesn't matter which side to put on top of the other. The seam allowance in each detail is one centimeter. I'll tack the details with the overlap seam. The width of the seam is one centimeter. The details should overlap for two centimeters, and the seam should be made right in the center of the overlap detail. The back is ready. When we take the sweatshirt, we'll show you the fitting. We'll also give you a review of the finished garment. We can also make a double-sided detachable collar. I'm not sure if we're going to do it. If you watch our videos regularly, you can learn a lot of useful information. We've already shown you how to make detachable collars. When the seam is edged with the cover stitch machine, the pink will be visible here as well as on the pocket. The cuffs will also be pink when rolled. The front is ready. Next, I need to tack the shoulder seams. I'll overlap the back details. In this way, the pink side will be visible from the front. I need to measure and mark 2 cm away from the edges. Let's have a look at the sleeves. They should be tacked the same way. Measure and mark 2 cm away from the edge. Join the details. The shoulder seam and the center sleeve should match, it's very important. Be very attentive.
I can't wait to see the result. When we show you the feeding, one of the tailors of my fashion house will remove the taken and take the garment again for stitching. Have a look at this leaf. Here are the drop shoulders. I'm going to take the second sleeve off the camera. The only details left to be tacked after that will be the side seams. Have a look at Ola. She is wearing the tacked sweatshirt. This is the first fitting. We're not going to show you the both sides now. Please, have a look at the shoulders. They are very neat. Such design is in trend now. You know that you don't need much time to make this pattern. It's not hard to do it. When we stitch the garment with the cover stitch machine, we'll cut the pocket openings. We'll give you a review of the finished garment in the next video. I remind you that you will be able to use the same pocket on the both sides. Oh, let's unrun, please. When the sweatshirt is ironed, it would look much better. You can see that the pink is visible on the blue side and vice versa. The sweatshirt is going to be very beautiful. We've already made a blue skirt of blend wool. Ola can combine these garments. Both of them are very comfortable. You can also make detachable collars for such sweatshirts. We've already shown you how to do it. You can find a link for the video in the description of this one. I love this design. It's in trend now. Such garments are suitable for cold weather. You can also make garments of the same design of light fabrics. Notice that the pink side is edged with the blue threads. The blue side is visible in the seams. The seams are decorative. They make the sweatshirt look very interesting. They were made with a cover stitch machine. There is a seam in the center back. Let's have a look at the other side. I love the design. This sweatshirt is very comfortable. A lot of people have asked me about why do we call this garment a sweatshirt? Well, how do you think should we call it? I believe that if we sew a garment, we are free to call it wherever we want. A sweater, a sweatshirt, a blouse. This is how it looks like from the blue side. The pink side is visible in the seams. The sleeves look very beautiful, then they are old. I showed you how to make the pockets. I hope you remember how to do it. The pocket bags and the underlay pieces were sewn inside. Now it's time to cut the pocket openings. I need to measure and mark one centimeter down from the seam and draw a line here. Do not reach the sides of the pocket. I need to cut one layer of fabric. Be very attentive. The pocket is ready. You can see the pink underlay piece in the opening. This is a very useful technique. I'd rather cut about 3 mm in order to make the underlay piece visible. Mm -hmm. 
I'm cutting a tiny detail. It's just 3 mm wide. I've cut just one layer fabric. The pocket is ready. There is a pocket bag inside of it. I've already shown you how to make such pockets. Next, I need to make a pocket opening in the second detail. I've invented this technique long ago, but I didn't have an opportunity to try it. I love the result. That's it. The blue side is ready. Next, I'm going to turn the sweatshirt to the other side and cut the openings on the pink side as well. I remind you that the garment is double-sided. It's very warm. I'm cutting the pocket openings on the pink side. I hope you remember that we stitched two underlay pieces to the pocket bag. The blue one is on the pink side and vice versa. We don't need to edge the openings. This is the best thing about working with the blend wool. This is how the pockets look like. Don't worry if they stretch a bit, it's okay. There are the pockets on the other side as well. Here they are. Next, Ole is going to put the sweatshirt on. Have a look at Ole. She's happy to have a new sweatshirt. Have a close look at it. I remind you that garments with a drop shoulder is a very popular now. You can use the same pattern to make different garments. Be creative. Change the designs we show you however you like. Next, Ole is going to change the side of the sweatshirt. Have a look at the pink side. The blue seams look very nice, as well as the blue cuffs. I love the result. Have a close look at the sweatshirt. Ole, turn around, please. Have a close look at the seams. They are very beautiful. 
We have devoted several videos to this garment. We have stitched it with the cover stitch machine off the camera. I have shown you how to cut the pocket openings today. The pockets are also double sided. The sweatshirt is very warm and comfortable. I am sure that you will also like this idea. It doesn't matter whether you make it of blend wool or not, double sided or not. I was happy to show you this design and technique. Such garments are pretty popular now. Let's be different and beautiful every day together. This is what I'm here for. We show you a lot of different techniques and designs for free. I hope you appreciate it. That's all for today. We are Irina Paukšte and Ola. Buy my courses, subscribe to my channel, write comments, share the videos, press the like and the bell buttons. I would really appreciate your support. Thank you. Goodbye.